Welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast, where we interview experts in various fields with the goal of empowering women to make informed decisions about their health, life, and family. I'm your host, Amy Jane Smith, and I would like to thank you for tuning in today to get comfy while I introduce our next guest. Hello and welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast. My name is Amy and I'm your host and today I am very excited to welcome back Dr. Anita Ranganathan who um, last week we were talking about breast cancer and her breast cancer story and we touched a little bit on sleep and we all know that we could learn a little bit about how we can improve our sleep and how we could sleep a little bit better and things that could maybe affect our sleep. So I've brought her back to delve into it because she is the sleep queen. So welcome back, Anita. Let's get going. Thank you, Amy. Let's get started. Let's get going. So we were talking about, um, oh, we we're talking about all sorts in the last episode. But today we're focusing on sleep. How did you, so you got into um, sleep coaching through your journey through cancer treatments? Is that how you got into that side of things? Or was it something that you always were interested in helping women with? Yeah, it's something that I've always been interested in. Um, so when it comes to sleep, you have different types of sleep disorders. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try and not go too medical and technical. But, you know, your sleep disorders can actually be something as in where you can't sleep or insomnia, you know, what everybody knows yeah. about. Versus people who um, maybe sleep a little bit too much or who are snoring or what they call now this obstructive sleep apnea. Mm. Um, my interest came in on when I, you know, was practicing as an ENT surgeon. Because of course. That, Sorry, yeah. I forgot about that. Yes. <laughs> That's okay, Amy. So it's really cool started off back then you know so when you are dealing with people who've had snoring because of huge tonsils or there's something wrong with their nose um so we've got different type of surgeries and interventions that can be done to help them for their snoring Mm -hmm. so the thing about sleep is because it's such a it has to be done in a kind of what we call a multidisciplinary approach where you're getting a team of professionals and each one looks into what can be done to really get that person back to have a relatively normal night of sleep. So as part of the diagnosis, as part of the treatment, whatever, I was always interested in it. So besides being a ear, nose and throat surgeon, most of us do like to do what we call a subspecialization. So as if like 15 years of medical school wasn't enough, <laughs> we go in and try to kind of subspecialize. And so for me, sleep has always been like my I would say like my baby. Right. Um, and so that's when, you know, you because you operate a lot on people who had snoring and you see the most amazing, amazing, amazing results that come out of it. And to be honest, it's not like everyone can be treated with the surgery, but yeah. even they do need what we call a machine, which is called a CPAP, which really helps you to breathe. Uh, the advantage of if you've undergone the surgery, uh, if you are the right candidate, is that the settings of your CPAP is much more lower, which means you're not going to for this whole it's something like trying to push an air through a wrist through a narrow hole yeah distance, versus opening up that hole a little bit and making that air flow a little bit more smoother ah does that make the machine less noisy <laughs> a little bit less noisy and definitely easier for the person who's using it as well you know yeah and um, so and that's where the whole thing that's where my interest came and then uh, along those lines, I also was also a lecturer and I also was involved in research because I was in, working in universities as well. Okay. So as that, I got involved in doing quite a bit of research. So one of my researches was on medical students and really see how their sleep or rather their lack of sleep hygiene or habits was actually affecting their grades. Yes. You know, and so we actually were able to, the grades part, of course, was because, you know, how ethics and everything works around research. So not many of them were too happy about it to reveal their grades. But what we did find was that medical students, even very earlier, early on in their medical, you know, when they just entered medical school, yeah, already getting affected and they already have really bad sleep hygiene. Um, and when you are, when you're going to be a medical person who's not even started seeing patients, if you already are not sleeping properly, yeah. then have a huge impact when you actually start seeing patients yes 
you know, so that was one of the researches. And the, the other one that I did, which also was really big was um, on pregnant um, ladies. And oh, yeah. if they were snoring during pregnancy, we could actually see how it was affecting the growth of the baby. Oh, gosh, of course. Yeah. You know, because it's simple, right? The oxygen is not enough. And yeah, things. that's where my real interest came. And then, of course, you know, then then you have then then you get hit with cancer, like what we had spoken about in our previous episode. Mm. <laughs> then you don't know what a good night like it, it's a distant dream having a good night's sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, I really, really worked on myself to make sure that. I get a good night's sleep. And they are still days. I won't say that I've got it all and all of that, but at least I know I'm doing my best um, using the tools, which I know um, have really helped me more than anything else. And so it's really integrating all of that together and really helping people who, whose sleep has been affected. But it's so many more, so much more, yeah. I wanted to ask how you go about assessing somebody's sleep. So if somebody comes to you and says, I can't sleep, or my partner keeps elbowing me in the ribs because I keep snoring. And how do you go about assessing it and getting the information so you can treat them properly? Yeah, so what we've done is that um, we have compiled a set of, which consists of seven questionnaires, mm -hmm. and each questionnaire addresses a different part of what could be your sleep problem. Mm -hmm. So we questionnaire which could be related to say your insomnia or even to see whether you actually have insomnia or not all the way to whether you've got snoring whether you've got a nose and throat problem which could be giving rise to your sleep problem how it is affecting your quality of life something as simple as do you have say back pain do you have uh, an uncomfortable pillow so we kind of have compiled all these questionnaires together to really um, address what could be the main thing that's happening. We yeah. go into things like sleep hygiene. Do you tend to be on your phone just before you go to sleep? Do you tend to have uh, caffeine within a few hours of going to sleep? So we all of that is addressed through all these questionnaires. And at the end of it, then we get a graph and we get a better, clearer idea of what could be a problem. And yeah. from there, you know, make it for you. So a classic example, if someone says, yeah, I feel like I've got a nose block um, and it really helps. It doesn't help me with my breathing at night, especially, um, you know, I'm a mouth breather and things like that. Then we say, mm -hmm. okay, ENT consult. And then we would refer them to an ENT specialist. Um, mm -hmm. All the way to somebody who may be having insomnia where you've got special, um, it's called CBTI. Um, it's type of a therapy for insomnia. It's been scientific. Oh, okay. So they can actually even, if they want, they can do it on them by themselves. It's like a self-paced thing yeah. or continue having our help. We also have a provision of a sleep coach, which is what I do as well, besides the initial part. So mm -hmm. I do the, pre the assessment part as well. And the sleep coach is also about saying, what are the aspects that you can actually uh, work on? So I do that part of it as well. And we've got, of course, and if, if people definitely need a little bit more, like they have to go, say, for a sleep study or things like that, then we direct them, we refer them to that as well. And two or three months later, then we also follow up and we give them a call and say, hey, how are you doing? Do you still need some help? Did anything come out of it or not, the consultation? And that's how we work. Yeah. 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 And that's so important, that follow up. Yes. As well, because... I know through my own coaching practice and I mean, I started as a personal trainer mm -hmm. and you say, okay, for the next week, I want you to go to the gym this time, many times a week, I want you to do this. And then you meet them a week later. How'd you get on? Did you do it? Well, no, yes. Well, I did this, but it didn't work. And if you don't have that follow-up, they might just say, oh, this didn't work. Yeah. Nothing works. I'm a lost cause and carry on so having that follow-up is so important so yeah. important yeah. yeah and that's what we do if they have if they have kind of if they've gone on the machines for example the first few months is when the chances of them saying oh god we don't want to have that machine is the most you know so you've got to go back and kind of ask them hey what's happening what can we do so we don't give them we don't say all right bring the back the machine and we look into it but what we can do is actually direct them and say maybe you need to go back to the manufacturer or the person who's provided 
and really giving them, you know, a little bit of a direction about how, what they can do. Because when you have anything related to sleep, it's this huge thing. You don't, first and foremost, you don't know whom to go to. And what we have is we have also liaised with the GPs because sometimes even the first, the first place of contact is the GPs, right? So yeah. the GPs, they again, not know who to refer to. Um, and so they referred them to us. And then that's when we kind of channelize and say, okay, this is where you could see, this is whom we will refer you to and take it from there. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Um, some people might think that they just go to the GP and maybe they'll get prescribed sleeping pills. And <laughs> there's so much more than just that because it is a whole bigger picture. What if it's stress? What if it's what you're eating? What if it's you just had too much to drink and you're up and down to the toilet mm -hmm. or, all of or or your husband's sleeping and snoring next to you right in your ear or your dog <laughs> on your face it could be anything <laughs> absolutely so what sort of tips you mentioned you mentioned the phone mm. and i know i know myself included mm. uh, i think my whole house is blue light until midnight a lot of the house i'm till nine but i'm still blue light um how do you kind of wean people off things like that yeah so amy if it makes you feel any better okay of all the people that i have kind of consulted <laughs> i may have had maybe like two or three people who have said that they you know really keep their phone away and they're really good and things like that okay hmm. so what you have been doing is completely, completely, completely what 95 or 99 percent of the people are doing. Let's be honest, you know, you've had a crazy day at work and you've had like an irritating maybe child who had a bad day at school and then you've got to handle her or him as well. You know, yeah. and after that, you've just managed to clean up and sort out dinner and you come and you're like, oh. so now finally I have my meeting. Me. Yeah. And at that time to go and like open and read a heavy book or try and do some meditation or journaling, although everybody says it's really good. But at that time, you really want to do something brainless. And I'm not yeah. saying, I'm not telling that phones are brainless, but hey, they're the perfect instant fix. Yeah. <laughs> you can just mindlessly scroll through Facebook or play Candy Crush, whatever it is, you don't have to think. Yeah. Um, it's really about kind of connecting back with kind of something else in life as well, besides your life. Um, so yeah. Now, the thing is, what can be done is instead of really having to keep make your phone your enemy, it's about the small little tweaks. So you mentioned this beautiful thing about the blue light, right? Mm -hmm. so we do know that nowadays on the phones, for example, you've got your screen time where you have a day mode and a night mode. Yes. Something as simple as, so the night mode, I don't know, I think it typically gets the pre, the factory settings is I think from 10 p.m. at night or something, I'm not sure. But you can actually kind of go all the way even to like 5 or 6 p.m. in the evening mm. and put it in dark mode. Is it a dark mode or a night mode? Night I think mode. it's a night mode and it kind of changes to yellow, doesn't it? Yeah. Or yellowish. It's not as bright anymore. Yes, because that's basically trying to bring you back the light of a sunset. And that's why it's called a yellow light, right? To, to put yeah. it simple. Blue light is what we're getting from our laptops or what we're getting from our devices. Um, and it's really trying to get your body into that place where it's thinking, ah, it's yellow light. Okay, so maybe it's time to go to sleep. It starts that wind down process. Yes. Uh... That, is, that is one thing that can really, really help. Um, the other thing that can actually also help is even if you just keep your 3G or your Wi-Fi off, mm -hmm. when you're going to go, then just put it off on your airport mode or your airplane mode, sorry. Yeah that immediately is going to reduce you know the emissions and everything the other thing that many of us have which we choose to have in our bedrooms are the routers right so your internet may be somewhere else and you have to have a router in your room because you know the the, the signal may not be too great mm. so they don't keep those routers in your rooms i never thought about that actually mine's always been in the office or somewhere else okay great <laughs> <laughs> How, how many people actually have it in the rooms wow. um, and so that's another thing as well so this, these are few things that actually can can be done and really about trying to establish you know a good kind of a bedtime routine um, like how many of us are good when we start off the day right we, oh, we do our exercise we do this we do that and we've eaten healthy and everything but by the evening or night 
Yeah. All just gone down. But that it time... Nose dives, isn't it? That time also is really, really important. So again, I'm not going to teach and I'm not going to, I don't really say that, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this. But it's really about you thinking. And that's what a coach is all about. It's really about your thinking. Finding what works for you. What do you normally do when you like to unwind? You know? Yeah. So fine, you want to go and watch an episode of um, Bridgerton, for example, then go do that. But change your Netflix settings so that you're not binge watching The Duke. <laughs> yes. You know, so you know that there's that, that next episode thing doesn't automatically go into next episode. You watch one episode and you're done for that day. Because it's when you're on, 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 on. Because and devices go into a black hole, don't you? Absolutely. And devices nowadays are made that way. They they are it's not only about um it's not only about the fact that it emits all that, you know, the emissions and everything, but it's also the content. The content is made in such a way that it's going to keep you addicted to it. That's just how yeah. it is, you know? And so, so you, you have to like literally say, okay, enough, this is it. And of course, you know, you've got in phone, you've got your settings and how much of time you want to send. And, you know, you can use those time settings and say, okay, only five minutes on Facebook or 20 minutes on Instagram or whatever, yeah. um, if you really do that way as well. So in a way, you can be with your phone, but it's about really establishing boundaries with your phone as well. Mm. Yeah. Um, you mentioned sleep, um, not hygiene, routines, your, your nighttime, bedtime routine. Yeah. And this is what I think is amazing. Um, I, I always said, yes, I'll be in bed by nine o'clock because I'm up at five. And then... It's I go to bed at nine o'clock and by the time I've done everything, it's more like 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. But having that routine gets me into the, the rhythm. And what I find when I talk to people is that, especially parents, their kids have a routine. They go through this bedtime routine and get the kids all ready for beds, bath, pajamas, story, beds. And it's all this wind down to help them to get to sleep. Mm -hmm. But then... They sit down, get their phone out, have a glass of wine or put Netflix on. And then it's, oh, it's midnight. I really need to go to bed. And there's, there's no, there's no process. We, as adults, we don't tend to do that. Is, how do we even start that? Yeah. Is it, is it kind of like what you said with the, making sure the Netflix is not continually rolling and things like that? So, how does, how does change come about? Change comes about with awareness, right? It does. It does. <laughs> yes. So the very fact that we want, when we realize and say, okay, we were supposed to be in bed by nine, we managed to get into bed by 10, but we are still awake at 12. And yes. that means no way that I want to get up at 5 a.m. because that means I'm just going to be terribly sleep deprived and that's mm -hmm. going to ruin the rest of my day next day. Um, it's really about us getting aware and saying, okay, what is one small, so this, this is the other thing. You can make these really fascinating goals and say, oh, I'm going to keep my phone away and I'm going to have my chamomile tea and I'm going to have my warm shower and, you know, all of that. And then suddenly saying, oh, it doesn't have to be an all or none phenomenon. You could make you could what, so my favorite step, my favorite word these days is micro steps. So micro steps Ooh, is I like that. Yeah, it's micro, it's steps. So it's yes. basically you're taking such small steps that there is no way you'll fail. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, and so instead of having this whole intimidating night schedule that you need to conform to, just mm. start with one or two things. Go lighter on it. Go, don't be so hard on yourself. <laughs> you mm. know, so it's one small little thing, like you say, okay, I want to un unwind with, say, I want to have my glass of wine. Go ahead and have your glass of wine, but just try not to have something, especially hard liquor within four hours of going to sleep, because that definitely has an effect, you know? Okay. Um, if you want to have like, so what I'm trying to say is if you've got like 10 things on your to-do list to improve, yeah. just one or two first. And mm -hmm. the beauty of all this is even the small little shifts that you're making, you'll start, you will see the benefit of it immediately. And that itself is going to make you try, oh my God, I've just done two out of 10 things. And still I'm feeling, I'm already feeling so much better. What's going to happen if, if I do? Yeah. Right. It's something yeah. I Personal trainer, you know how it is. Like, I'm sure you've seen the glee of people when they've seen, oh, yeah, my God, we, you know, my BMI is better or whatever, maybe the way you, you gorge it. But mm -hmm. like, the 
that's your happiness. And then they're going to be there again with you on time, happy to come back to you for their second, third, 10th session. Because exactly. they're yeah. the result of that, right? I mean, there's, gosh, I used to be with my personal trainers and it, it used to be wonderful when they do all the measurements and everything. I'm like, yes, you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So start off small, start off small. Don't get intimidated by it. And the most important thing is, at the end, when you manage to get your goals or get whatever you wanted and establish what your initial plan was, reward yourself. Mm. Reward yourself. Yes. We just take it for granted and then we are like, okay, what next? What next? What next? What next? Don't we reward our kids when they've been good and they've gone to sleep on time? You know, at the end of a week, you're like, okay, you know what? I think you deserve, I don't know, an ice cream or whatever. So if yeah. we can reward them, why can't we reward ourselves? Yeah. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. Yeah. 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 And how, so there's, there's the sleep that we can kind of control and figure out ways of helping ourselves through step-by-step -step processes. But what if we're not in control of our sleep, like new parents, for example? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How, is, is there any way that they can get some respite? I've, I've, yeah. I've heard, I don't know, but I've heard that you're just a zombie for a few, a fair few months until you get into the routine and then you get a little bit better and then you go, oh, again. But how, yeah, how can you help? How can, yeah, how? Yeah. <laughs> Um, that's that's a brilliant thing. Um, there again, I think it's interesting because whether it is new parents or whether you're a caregiver or um, whatever may be the circumstances where you have to kind of, you feel like you have to be there for the other person. Mm. Um, I think that's a time where we really have to sit back and um, consider um, when you yourself are sleep deprived, are you actually going to be in your best um, form for the other person. And I do understand for infants, yes, they do require, you know, two early feeds, um, everything else in between. At that time, it's important. There are phases where you may not be able to immediately address anything related to your sleep. Yeah. And do though is, if it's an infant, which is what you were asking, which yeah. is, the, you know, the maximum at um, kind of going um, bonkers, your sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is, it's really about establishing so that you could try and get your child to get a good sleep routine. So once your child gets a good sleep routine, automatically you've got some more time. Yes. Get back around that. Um, it's something like if it really means that you, and luckily you've got, and that's why you've got nowadays people, the, even the men get paternity leave, right? It's yes. really about maybe sharing the responsibilities because that's another thing which as ladies, we think that we have to be the one who's doing everything because this baby came out from me. Mm. And I do understand there are certain things which a man can't do. <laughs> yes, yes. I was just thinking at night time if they need feeding and it's yes, absolutely feeding, it's a bit difficult to yeah. you know, hear that. But there are so many other things if we, we really, really think. It's like, do I really have to be the one doing that or can my husband do it or my partner do it? Right? Yes. So it's about still being able to establish those small little boundaries even in the midst of all of this mm. uh, but what you're saying is very true because yes there are certain phases when your sleep is going to get disturbed but don't spend sleepless nights over the fact that you can't sleep worrying that yes it, go, it kind of goes round and round you lie there going i can't sleep i can't sleep i'm gonna i'm waiting for something to wake me up waiting for the baby and waiting for this and then you just don't rest anyway do you yeah yeah so they are very and there, there are many more kind of specific techniques as well which i would be happy to share you know maybe if you want later as a link if people if real it's moms who really need that help there are a few experts to be honest, I'm really not an expert in that specific um, field, but there are a lot of people who are doing specifically. So with classically, if you talk about sleep coaches, most of them are the ones who are dealing with new parents. Ah, which yeah. leads me on to your specialty. Okay. 
Oh, okay, yeah. Sleep, your a new specialty, your sleep and cancer yeah. yes. side of things. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking about the stress mm -hmm. and certain times in life, which led me to think about menopause. Now, in the last episode, you mentioned the pills that you take when you're going through breast cancer treatments mm -hmm. to stop the production of estrogen and progesterone, which makes you your body just go flick the menopause switch. How does... I've heard that that does affect your sleep. And then... Along with that, you've got the stress of cancer as well. How, how can cancer affect your sleep and how do you manage that side of things? Yeah, so um, I think we'd, we'd spoken about this as in, you know, the last, um, in the previous episode about how we could really kind of categorize cancer from the time you're diagnosed and then mm -hmm. you're talking about the second stage where it is you're undergoing the treatment or the active treatment. Yes. And then Kind of come into a category of a survivorship um and yes i suppose straight from the start your sleep would be affected won't it from the time you may have even um got in a doctor's appointment to go and see with the suspicion of cancer from that time itself the fright the scare the, the hurt the anger mm. everything kicks in um and when you're going through treatment, and I think that is, this is important because in certain types of treatments, especially uh, for breast cancer again, um, to help them ease for the chemotherapy, they also put on steroids. Oh, gosh. When they are on steroids, and that obviously is known to, even on its own, affect the sleep. Forget about everything else. Um, it's a fine line. I mean, you still want to get your chemotherapy and you need all of that to kind of survive the illness. Mm. It's always a very, very delicate topic and it's always a really fine balance. Yes. So for, I would still recommend, obviously, you still have to go through the treatment that's been recommended by your oncologist or your surgeon. Whatever. But in addition to that, what, it is, what are the small things that you can actually do in between in, in, to try and get that kind of okay sleep? Mm. We've actually done studies and they say even cancer-related fatigue, which is a known entity, gets worse than if your sleep hasn't been okay and it's been like scientific as well and then coming to your question the one about your estrogen your progesterone yes so menopause everyone's talking about hot flashes or hot flashes uh, which for some irritating reason has to happen at night <laughs> oh no oh no to be able to sleep and then suddenly or maybe it's just because you know also at night you are kind of Finally, you think you've got some time to yourself and that's when you get a little bit more aware versus yeah. in the you are, you've got different distractions. Um, and yes, so hot flashes are definitely really, really big for especially people who are on hormonal therapies. Now, having said that, um, there are a lot of um, people who nowadays, and this is something that I kind of maybe want to give a little bit of a warning about. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people who advocate um, certain herbs and certain supplements and um, things like that that would actually supposedly help you with your sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, my only warning is, um, again, I'm not for it. I'm not against it. But what I would really, really, really strongly recommend is that whatever you're going to be taking into your system, make sure that your primary health care provider knows about it as well. Yes, because there'll be contraindications, won't there? Contraindication. They can be, you know, drug interactions. Yeah. Um, you just don't want to take, I mean, you are anyway going through chemotherapy, you're going through the nuances of it, you're losing your hair, your nails are getting brittle and all of that. And it's really sad that people kind of capitalize on someone who's already going through something like cancer, yeah. but there are a lot of people out there, you know, uh, and you have to get really, really smart about it. Mm -hmm. So again, I don't advocate and I, I'm not going to, I would not be mentioning any specific herbs or anything because there's okay. so the market, half of which I cannot even pronounce. <laughs> but all that I would really recommend is whatever you're taking, make sure that your primary healthcare, the provider, your oncologist knows what it is. Mm -hmm. Because the beauty of it, and we are at such a wonderful stage and age right now, is that all of these things have already been researched into. 
you know so anything is automatically you can be seen and there are so many websites if anybody is really interested i can even share those websites where you can specifically see what are the herbs what interaction what you can be having what you can't be having because i'll be honest amy um cancer by itself is not a cheap illness um if you have like great insurance or you're going through the public sector but for everything else in addition to that all your integrative things that you want to do even if it's a special massage that you want to go for i i think you may not want to go to any other massage therapist you would like to go to someone who is oncologically trained massage therapist and all these things cost money and so at that time and these herbs don't come cheap they aren't cheap no they don't come cheap at all um so it's really about being careful and being aware of what you're going to be doing so yeah if it's hot flushes there are ways of coping with it as well but just be careful of what you're going to be doing like some people it could be as simple as placing a cold mat you know you get cold mats which people yeah. like ones that you use for your pets yeah you can get it off kmart and that helps something as simple as that yeah. <laughs> i saw them at my set 10 i was very tempted to get one for ourselves and pop it under the sheet yeah, yeah it actually helps it actually yeah. helps yeah and that's the whole thing about your hormones and um then of course there's a whole psychological aspect of it right the fact that i mean i know of people who are 25 and 30 years old who um have had to go into menopause they haven't been part of their families no you know uh people who are have a breastfeeding they found their lump as part while they were breastfeeding right you know and so things like that when you have to go into menopause yeah you require so much more support and this again is something which people are very reluctant about because no one wants to be in the category of depression or anxiety or anything right it's kind of you know there's still a little bit of a stigma around mental health but i think at this time you really really need that additional support the additional help family members are great other cancer survivors are great don't get me wrong you get amazing support from people who want to be there for you but these are professionals who are dealing and in new zealand you have professionals who deal with people who have cancer or who have had cancer yeah and that's so valuable because other people have their own story their own interpretation of what they've gone through or what they've heard about something and yes. all of those interpretations can cloud your own judgment absolutely. and sometimes make it worse absolutely absolutely yeah everyone's coming from a good place yeah. but um, you know it is what it is yeah Yeah. it is it now is. the other thing is also for insomnia so insomnia is obviously it could be related because of your cancer or you could just be having insomnia is nowadays um studies have proven have shown that uh, mindfulness mindfulness really really helps um you know your mbsr is scientifically proven when you've completed your in 8 week of mbsr which is mindfulness based stress reduction that really really helps in among other things it also helps in improving your sleep quality and the other thing is which is scientifically proven is also what they call cbti which is called cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia so these are ah all, okay and things that you just kind of google and you find someone offering it for free and you do it on your own yeah. you need to show that your insomnia is insomnia and it's what is the cause and what else can be done so as i mentioned the whole thing is an integrated thing so yeah. even things available online uh try to know when you can try doing things on your own and when you yeah. actually need professional advice that's it it's all very good trying trying something and finding these free tools but this trying it and 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 it's not working and actually going to see somebody yes. yeah yeah there is value in seeing somebody who knows what they're doing absolutely you know, i'm Absolute. trying to cut corners all the time but yeah it's your health you know you you don't think twice about when you want to go away for a holiday or something like that but um it's your health if you don't have health then what do you have you don't have anything you just don't have anything absolutely so and sleep is is a huge it's a huge pillar of health it is i mean i don't know if you've mentioned it yet in this episode but the last episode we said if you don't have sleep you can't yeah. do anything you can't do anything you can't do anything like i knew today we were doing this podcast and i made sure that i had a good night of sleep because if not you you're just not going to be able to give your best and no. just, you're just not fair on anybody you know you're a personal trainer i'm sure you may have seen on maybe a night when you may have not slept so well 
uh, versus on a night when you've had a really good night of sleep. You know, it just changes everything. It just sets the tone for a good day. And it makes you even more capable of facing all those crappy things that are going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's not like you're already feeling crappy and then there's something that adds on to that crappiness. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you wake up and you're already tired and then yeah. something else happens. And then and then you make silly mistakes yeah. that you wouldn't have done if you were awake and it just compounds. Um, I wanted to touch, I just thought... Um, as I was looking out the window, we mentioned um, mm. melatonin and serotonin. Um, now, melatonin is something that you can take. Can you take serotonin as well? Um, well, it's not really taking serotonin. Because or is it's, it something? It's, um, it's, you can, let's put it this way. You can do activities that is going to increase the serotonin levels. So I know when I talk to, when I talk to my ladies, my clients, Mm -hmm. um, I talk often about getting up, opening the curtains, mm -hmm. getting the sunlight in your eyes and boosting that serotonin. And I say when I talk to them that serotonin is S for the sun and melatonin is M for the moon. That's how I remember it. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> and so letting your body get used to the darkness. I think this goes back to the phones and all of that. Is there a way that you can kind of train yourself into a sleep cycle using daytime, nighttime, yeah, rather absolutely. than just going for? Absolutely. Your daytime, daytime, what you're saying is really, really good. Something as simple as seeing your early morning, getting the early morning sun, mm. and really looking at it. I mean, not that it's when it's kind of bright, bright yeah. but if you know what I mean, even looking at it or letting it reach, hit your retina yeah. for about. 20 minutes in a day or rather in the morning that's already setting the tone mm. and the advantage of that is if you're going to be standing in the sun you're standing in the garden you're getting your you're getting your vitamin d as well you are yes you know so you're kind of sorted in many ways you're getting your because everyone's talking about vitamin d these days right about the magic and it's one of the few things that are proven to reduce the pandemic and the effects of it of people who've had that and things like that um, and so yes vitamin d is big as well you're doing your your you the, those those yellow rays is what so it's basically your you know the the spectrum of your rainbow so mm -hmm. the yellow is basically that which basically says it it, it um, stimulates your so you have a sleep wake cycle so it's yeah. to wake up part of it yes and if you've yeah. had a, a rubbish night's sleep would that help to kind of perk you up a little bit rather than just kind of crawling into the kitchen and pouring yourself yeah. a coffee Definitely, definitely, definitely. It's there, it's free, you've got fresh air, you've, your coffee is great, but have you ever thought about how you feel two hours after you've had that coffee? Mm -hmm. Mid-morning slump where nothing helps. <laughs> yeah, nothing helps, don't talk to me, I need another coffee kind of thing, or yeah. energy drinks or anything like that, just yeah. Yeah. turns the so body bonkers thing you know and then your serotonin is basically like it's almost it's like oxytocin and things like that it really helps you to overall feel good so you are going to feel good when you've done your walk when you're out in nature a hug um playing with your pet or your child all of that is kind of your feel good hormone um yeah. it's all part of it right it's the it whole is. you know the beauty of this is sometimes you really compartment we tend to compartmentalize and say okay sleep yeah. this that this end of the day it's this whole body <laughs> you know how did we forget about that so it's really about doing and being smart about it you know saying okay i get my sunlight i get my vitamin d i've done my walking um i've done my uh, my grounding you know if you're going to stand bare feet on the grass then you've done your as well so you're doing like four or five things within like 20 minutes and it's a great way to start your day it is you know listen to a podcast if you want so you're making use of all your senses <laughs> <laughs> and you're really smart about it. <laughs> That's it. I do more walking when I've got my headphones in and a podcast on than right. I do if I'm just wandering around observing the world around me. Now, both of them have their place, but sometimes I'm like, oh, do I really want to go for a walk? I know. Yeah. Away yeah. you go. And yeah, that's really good. And you learn so much on the way. Absolutely. Win-win. <laughs>
<laughs> you can't go wrong there. So yeah, it does. It, it definitely helps. It really sets um, your internal, like your circadian rhythm. It's one of the ways of um, getting it. Because initially we were supposed to be getting up early and sleeping early, but somewhere along the line. Yes. We didn't so much. I suppose electricity was invented. <laughs> I and guess. The light bulb. Thank goodness Thomas Edison isn't still around. <laughs> There's a lot to answer for that man. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, we could stay up. I mean, you know, we had candles and things before, but lights have gotten brighter and brighter and brighter. And we stay up longer and we don't go through that cycle. No. But the good news is that, you know, there is, there, the, the hacks are still relatively very simple. You don't have yeah. to know anything huge and you don't have to like, I mean, um, sleeping tablets and things like that are good up to a certain extent, but we always have to remember, uh, and nowadays it's not like they make you dependent or anything like how it used to be the stigma before, you know, like, oh, you're going to have to live with it. For the, I mean, you're going to need it for the rest of your life. Yeah. But it kind of really numbs a lot of other things as well. Um, and it was about a matter of going and getting dependent on a pill versus trying to say that maybe this is something I could just do in a much more easier and more kind of eco-friendly way. Yeah, you know, rather than that. And so there's so much that's been done. There's so much of studies and research now, you know, how aromatherapy helps and, you know, things like that. So we are at a really beautiful place right now with the internet and our access to so many things. Um, give, come up with an idea and the next, like you check two months later, someone's already done a research on that. Yeah. Uh, well, you know what I mean, right? And yeah. so, uh, because I've been there right, as a research person, you're like, ah, oh, I have this brilliant idea. Let me go and see if somebody else is doing it. And you put it in and you're like, true enough, there are about 10 other people who are already working on that. And yeah. that's when you realize like you've got to, you know, people are all the time working on things like that. And uh, it's, it's actually just absolutely amazing, but it all starts with us. <laughs> it does and tuning in like there's a lot of things that people do that that deaden our senses whether it is reaching for the coffee or reaching for something sugary something to boost us up or and then taking a pill to help us relax or go back to sleep again and we get out of sync with what our own body is telling us or what what it yeah. wants and what it needs and mm -hmm it's that you can't you can't force somebody to tune into themselves but what if you could say one thing to somebody to help maybe ignite something what what could that be yeah um so i'm assuming that most of the people who are going to be listening here are going to be our women yes and we are very very blessed with a very strong intuition uh, if you don't know, even now, like now, because as part of being a spouse, being a mom, being an employer, yeah. whatever, uh, you kind of lose track of what other things which you actually enjoyed and what is actually relaxing to you. Mm. One very nice thing is, you know, if you are lucky enough to have your parents around, because many of us don't really remember as children what we even used to enjoy. Um, True, yeah. You ask your siblings, say, yeah, how? You know, what do you think? Try to go back to that. Try to get something, get a small little thing that you actually enjoy. If not now, you used to enjoy before. Mm. It is meaning if you go to a dancing class or you want to go and do, you know, for a paint and wine class, you know, something like that. But like really about exploring the creativity because what's happened is we have just, we are all the time using only one side of our brain and the creative part of us, unless we are in a profession where creativity is great, but those people usually are coping quite well. It's the ones like us who are always on the go, on the go, on the go, who just don't yeah. know to balance it out. And that balance is very, very important. Mm -hmm. And the, it's not about going and talking to someone and someone who says, you need to journal, you need to do mindfulness, you need to do this, you need to do that, because you may not enjoy it. Yeah, you know, if you don't see the point, you won't get it and you won't do it. And if you don't enjoy it, and worse still, if you've spent a humongous and ridiculously high amount of money for that, you're going to get sleepless about that. <laughs> yeah. So it's, 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 it's a no-win. Uh, on the other hand, if you remember what, do you, what are the things that you used to do as a kid or even in between as something that you really used to enjoy to relax, start just doing that. And who's going to answer all these questions to you? Either you yourself, if you've got a strong enough intuition, if you remember things like that. Uh, like someone like me, I moved countries. This is my third country I'm living in. You know, so I for know. me, 
if I want to go back to my childhood, I would have to like go back to, I don't know what, and we moved so many houses. So most likely there's nothing of my childhood that's there. Um, so something like that, but I'm lucky to still have my mom around. I've got my sisters and things like that, you know? Um, and if you have never had a chance, and that's another thing which I think quite a few also, we've never really had a chance to really explore anything else besides studying and sports and, you know, all kind of help you towards your career. Yeah. Uh, it's never too late. It's never too late. Start doing something. Um, there are loads of activities that you can start doing. This is so I much. Really like that. Yeah. I really like that. I yeah. used to love coloring. Yeah. And I got given a coloring book. No, yeah. books, adult coloring books for my birthday yeah. last year. Yeah. And it was like, oh, I don't have time for that. It's a nice idea, but no. And then at the weekend, I finally got it out and just got the color pencils out and started coloring away and it was brilliant it yeah. was brilliant and i felt so much more relaxed yeah. from going about the house going i should be doing something important i should be doing this I should be doing that and then it's no i need to chill i need to chill out and that was yeah. and the way you said right it's really about filling up your own cup mm. of and only the overflowing is what you're going to be. So when we think that we are being really selfish by making time for ourselves, not really. When you have filled up your cup, you are going to, you're going to be able to turn up for everybody and every situation yeah. so much more. That's uh, it. That, and I was less irritable. I was much, yeah. much nicer person to be around. <laughs> yeah, and you'll be surprised because I think the same task that may have normally, maybe on a normal day taken you maybe like, an hour, you may have been able to do the entire task in 30 minutes because mm -hmm. you, you are at the place where you're like, yeah. oh, with my best and I'm boom, I'm going to do it. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. So, so it's taking the small little steps and the way you said, right, you, you decided, I mean, you got it like a year ago and this now last weekend you decided, okay, let me get into it. And now that you've kind of spent maybe even 10 or 15 minutes doing it, mm. the amount of pleasure it gave you, you're going to be like, okay, maybe, okay, let's me do it on the weekend initially first because it still can't fit into my weekday schedules. And then slowly you may say, oh, maybe five minutes every day. And that's how you're going to kind of ease into mm. it. And then yeah. you say, am I going to spend like half an hour on the phone? Or should I spend 20 minutes on the phone and 10 minutes coloring? You know, so it's kind of easing into it. Um, yeah. You're the best judge. You are the best judge. You would know exactly yeah. That's it. You are the expert of your own body. I think that always seems to be a running theme with my podcasts. Okay. Yeah. You are the experts of your own body. You know you better than anybody who's talking Absolutely. to you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's just about doing that. Um, now you've got a workshop, a masterclass coming up and you also, um, you work with, correct me if I'm wrong, is it Auckland Sleep? Yeah, that's right. Yes. Um, what's the work that you do with them? Yeah. So what I do with there is when we get the um, well clients or patients referred through the GPs, or some of them actually just find us online and they kind of self refer. Mm -hmm. uh, what we do is that we kind of we do an initial assessment, as I mentioned earlier, where we use questionnaires through them. So many of them. Uh, would prefer to come into the clinic, um, which is in Remiera Road, and they like to, you know, we have it like face to face. Uh, quite a few people who maybe even like out of Auckland or who are like really in a different part of Auckland mm -hmm. have an option of even doing it over Zoom. So when we do it over Zoom, it's the same question and that's run past. And then at the end of it, then within about, you know, a couple of days, we come out with a personalized report for them on the basis of the questionnaires. And then we refer them and say, all right, on the basis of this, this is whom you can see, this is whom you need to see, and this is the referral letter, and we can make the appointments with them. So it's really about giving them like, you have a sleep problem, come to us and leave it in our hands and we will handle it. And then of course, you know, and all the different- Giving them tools and- Yeah, yeah, giving them tools, lifestyle, you know, what depending again on what they, what they require at yeah. the end question is and that's what we typically do and also as I mentioned earlier we also follow up because the, the way you said follow up is so pivotal so yeah. you want them to really feel because if two months later they're still having the same problem we can go back and say all right maybe that didn't help and maybe now this is what you need to do. so it's also about kind of really giving a tailor made yeah uh, they might not reach out to you if it doesn't work they might just say oh it doesn't work I did it wrong or 
but yeah. Did you say you had a masterclass through there as well? Yes. So a masterclass where initially um, everybody who will be registering will be doing the uh, questionnaire mm -hmm. on their own. Once they register, then you know the questionnaire would be done, and then I would be assessing their reports, and yeah. which is why um, I'm not going to open it out to too many people because then yeah. you know it would be of any benefit. And at the end of it, you know everybody gets a chance to kind of have an interaction, ask and things like that. And I would be giving them tips, and I would be telling, all right, this is what we're doing, this is what can be done, this is what you can be done. Because one is doing all the questionnaires away, but at the end of it, it's also this always this thing which is saying. What else is there that maybe we could address, which was not addressed in the questionnaire? Because yeah. the person has to feel like they've been heard and they've been listened to completely. Of course, and yeah. That we may have not covered everything or there's something else. And it's kind of nice to do it in a group setting as well, rather than doing it on a one-on-one. -on -one. Because mm -hmm. when you have things like this in a group setting, then they, you, it's kind of, there's almost a kind of an ongoing support that people can actually have as well. And of course, because it's, it's, it's online, so you can be sitting pretty much anywhere. That was my um, next question. Yeah. Will it be in Auckland or anything? And that's what it's all about. It's also about addressing what can be done depending on how it is. And more than anything else, getting people to really say and ask what they want to have. So it's even though it's a masterclass, I believe that it has to be interactive because people need to get a chance to speak and yeah. ask their questions as well. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I'm, I'm looking at doing. Fantastic. And if people want to book into that, will they just get in touch with you on your website? They can. Uh, I will share the website, um, you know, on the Auckland sleep. Because again, I'm obviously doing it as part of that, as being an yes. employee there. Yeah. However, uh, I would be happy, um, you know, we could we could actually give a 10% discount if they're going to come through you. Oh, uh, perfect. So, Thank yeah, you that. We can do that as well. So there has to be, you know, benefits. And they can, if they want to come along with, they have of. I, I can't say friend because let's be honest, not many of us discuss our snoring habits. But if no. you want, <laughs> if you want your partner as well to be assessed or something like that, then we can just work out a package as well. But yeah, Brilliant. the best. And I can like, pop the link in the show notes for that. Or they could, you could maybe directly, maybe they could contact me directly. Yep. Um, There's not much of a confusion of what's happening over there, and then yeah, we could take it from there. Sounds good. Perfect. I will make a note to contact yes. you and just say that they've heard yep. through here. So we're coming to the end wow. and I know, I know. Um, I just wanted to ask before we finish, is there anything that um, you wanted to add that maybe I've missed? Um, sleep is important. Um, sleep disorders is very, very underdiagnosed. Uh, what we would be thinking is I've spoken to people who have got kids who are 16 and 17 years old and their sleep habits got really, really, um, forgive me for saying this, but shitty after when they had the kids as infants. And so 15, 16 years later, the kids have grown up and they are perfectly fine yeah. and the kids are still struggling with their sleep. It's not about only having a sleep problem. It's also about seeing what are the repercussions of it. Yeah. So it's sleep deprived it's not only about your quality of life but it's also other more significant things like high blood pressure um a type of hypertension a type of mm. heart failure and things like that so you don't want to reach that stage no and um correct me if i'm wrong but is there is there are there studies as well linking poor sleep habits to heart disease in women yeah absolutely yeah absolutely you have heart diseases, you have, um, as I mentioned, it's either high blood pressure or you can even have a type of heart failure if you let it stay there for long enough, right. if you're severe snoring. Um, for kids, kids also snore. That's another very, very, very small, top, I mean, a topic which not many people address for yeah. children as well. And so their cognition gets affected. They're not performing well in school. Right, because of course. They're so sleepy. They just can't handle it. And that again, something that an ENT can look into. Um, in fact, you know, we do what we call the tonsil surgery. Mm -hmm. so the commonest cause for doing a tonsillectomy is because it used to get recurrent infections. Right now, it is moved that the commonest indication is because of snoring. Ah. And so, you know, your fast food and obesity and everything really hasn't helped much. Um, okay. it's, all, it's all put together. So yeah, to answer your question, if you have even that slightest 
doubt of a sleep related problem. I mean, at the end of your, even if you do choose to come for the masterclass or you just want to address your sleep, forget about the masterclass or otherwise. Yeah. At the end of it, if it is not too bad, and if I look at it and I'm like, you know what? Yeah, you do have a problem, but you know, maybe with a little bit of a changes and a little bit of a tweaking here and there, you would be fine. Versus me saying, okay, you really need to address this and let's let's get on to it. Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't have to necessarily be in the physical physical. Many people very typically is like the partner is sleeping in another room. Mm. So it's definitely about because what is the main thing is that yes, our bed is for two things: sleeping and intimacy. Yeah. And so not sleeping properly, you're not having intimacy, then, right? So it's yeah. really about that entire quality of life as well. So yeah. this doubt at all, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy for anybody to even just, if they want to just get into a chat, I'm more than happy as well. But it's really about preventing um, the, the long-term effects of it. Mm. In every yeah, so don't take it lightly. No, no, don't just think, oh, I can't sleep. Oh, my battery is going to die. <laughs> well, that must just be a signal that we've got that to end. That must it. be a sign. So <laughs> I thought it was plugged in. So there you go. Um, no, I've plugged it back in now. It's, I kicked it. That's all right. Um, that, yeah, I was just looking at my last question, which was what is one thing that if they take nothing away from this, but this one thing, what would you like women to take away from this interview today? Um. Since we are talking mainly on sleep, yeah. A, if you think there is something that you can do about your sleep, the answer is yes. If you think you can do it on your own, you can try. However, if it is something that you know is really, really, really impacting your quality of life in every way, mm. then professional help for it. It it will it will it will just make you a better spouse, a better mum. Um, someone who's going to be a more cheerful and happier person just to be around um, and for yourself as well for your life forget about being everybody there for everybody yeah. else your own as well it's going to be absolutely brilliant for you um, I've yet to hear everybody complaining saying oh I slept too well yes. no yeah no one's ever said that yeah, yeah. there's no <laughs> yeah so, no yeah <laughs> absolutely no, I, I sleep pretty good. I never complain about it. Awesome. I think that's also because you're physically really active as well. So that must be really helping. Yeah. Um, they hate me. Everyone. <laughs> everyone. I sleep like the dead. Nothing can wake me. I'm gone. And then my alarm will go off. Oh, okay. Right. I have to go. Oh, everyone must be envious of you. They, yeah. <laughs> it'll come. It'll come. My mom threatens me that when I have kids, it'll come. <laughs> and you won't be able to sleep and you'll well, regret it no, no, let, let's 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 not go with that preconceived notion with all the awareness and all the tools that you had you yourself know and you've you know you're a coach on your own you know yes. that pretty much you can really create your reality so yes. when it happens, i'm not going to say if when it's going to happen we're going to be on to it <laughs> we will we will and i like um what you said um what you think your what you perceive is real to you your mind creates your reality. Absolutely. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> well, thank you very much for agreeing to talk to me about sleep and for the last episode because it was back to back recording today. So thank you for sticking with me. And yeah, I'll share all of the links and tell people how to get in touch with you on the websites. Absolutely. Thanks. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Have thank a lovely day. You too. Bye. Bye for listening to the Women's Wellness Podcast. For links and show notes, please visit www.connecthealth.fitness forward slash podcast. I would love for you to subscribe to the channel so you get notified when we release our next episode and please share with anyone who you think might benefit. Thank you again. I look forward to seeing you soon.